So, I'm back. Back from the Conservative conference in Manchester where Boris Johnson uh, presented his new Brexit proposal to the European Union. A proposal that is now backed by the DUP Northern Ireland, but also a lot of hard Brexiteers across the country. Now, in a letter to the European Union, Boris Johnson outlined his new ideas to uh, replace the Irish backstop to uh, avoid a hard border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Now, there are a number of bullet points and issues that he's mentioned, but one of the most important ones is uh, number five, uh, at the bottom of the second page, where he says... Under these arrangements, Northern Ireland will be fully part of the UK Customs Territory. Now, this was the problem with Theresa May's deal originally, because obviously when you go through the uh, pr process of leaving the EU, because of Article 50, every country has to go through these, these negotiations to sort out the divorce settlements. And uh, when it comes to the UK, we have four main points uh, to consider. There is the Irish border issue, there is the citizens' rights, the payment, and the transi transition period. Now, the citizens' rights aspect is already agreed anyway by both sides. Payment uh, hasn't been mentioned by Boris Johnson today, but he has uh, clarified uh, over the last couple of months that he also wants to revise that £39 billion figure. Uh, so let's see how that goes. Uh, then, but, but the Irish question is kind of interesting because uh, under Theresa May's backstop plan, it would have been the EU and the ECJ that would have uh, made all the decisions and we would have been essentially uh, tied completely to the European Union, especially Northern Ireland. Now, being in the customs union would have been a problem because that meant Northern Ireland would have been separated from the rest of the UK. Boris Johnson's proposal says that the Northern Ireland area and the UK will be completely out of the customs union and no longer under the control of the ECJ. Now, as a WTO Brexiteer, I still prefer no deal Brexit. Not because it makes sense economically as an option, but because politically and logically, because of the way the European Union have treated us during this process, but also the way they treat nation states and their negotiating partners, I think they just need to learn a lesson. Having said that, we have to also say that this current proposal is completely different to Theresa May's deal, regardless of what Jeremy Corbyn tells you. For example, under Theresa May's deal, the jurisdiction of the ECJ would have lasted uh, until eight years after the end of the transition period. It also said that the UK will still be bound by any future changes to EU law in which it will have no say, uh, not to mention having to comply with current law. Now, that was a problem with Theresa May's treaty uh, as opposed to Boris Johnson's idea. And that's why it's now being backed by the DUP and hard Brexiteers like Steve Baker. What has changed is not our red lines. What has changed is the government has changed. I mean, have you not noticed that Boris Johnson has taken a completely different approach to Europe, to the withdrawal agreement? He's saying he's scrapping the backstop. He's, getting, he's going to take Britain and Northern Ireland together out of the customs union. The, there's no trap anymore. Uh, the consent principle is going to be respected all around. That's what's changed, and, and I welcome that. Okay. Yes, I do think it has a chance, but it really does. It really turns upon the European Union's willingness to recognise this really might be the last chance to get a deal that Boris Johnson really is not going to choose to extend. If they get into that negotiating tunnel and engage on the substance of these proposals and also all the other issues with the withdrawal agreement, which I know our negotiators have raised with them, yes. if they're willing to... Uh, uh, to, to treat on all of those issues, it could well be that we emerge with a deal that I can proudly vote for and say to the Brexit party, this really is Brexit and you, should, you two should back it. Now, the only people who are angry and quite concerned about this new proposal are the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats, the SNP, the European Union, but also Nigel Farage. Now, Nigel Farage is uh, one of the most hardworking Brexit campaigners that we've had since day one. We wouldn't have had the referendum before for him. But because of his personal conflict uh, with uh, Dominic Cummings over the last few years, he's essentially now stealing lines from Jeremy Corbyn. Now, we've seen Nigel Farage for the past few years saying that he knows that because of Article 50, both sides have to go through these uh, talks uh, to have the divorce settlement to make sure everything's uh, done when you leave after two years. And uh, so there has to be some sort of negotiation anyway. 
But now, because of his personal issues, he's just basically going around saying, uh, just say no to any deal. Even if it's the best deal that will make Britain the f most free country in the world, he's just basically saying no to everything. And that's a kind of political problem and uh, not really our issue. Now, going back to Remainers, this was Jeremy Corbyn giving an interview only hours after Boris Johnson made his speech without actually giving the full details of the pr uh, proposal. It's worse than Theresa May's deal. I can't see it getting the support that he thinks it will get and it will take us into a regime in Britain of deregulation, of uh, undercutting and I think will also undermine the Good Friday Agreement. What is it that's worse than Theresa May's proposals? Well what's worse is particularly the section on Northern Ireland which is very unspecific how the Good Friday Agreement can be upheld within the terms of the letter that he sent. But also much worse is a specific intention to deregulate alongside Europe. Whereas in fact, when we were negotiating with Theresa May's government, they did agree to some degree of regulation. Our talks broke down because they were not strong enough on environmental regulation. But this Prime Minister seems to want to lead to a deregulated Britain with a race to the bottom. See, that's what's interesting is that he didn't have the de details. Jeremy Corbyn didn't know uh, what was in that proposal. He just said, oh, this is just basically Theresa May's deal. How would you know? You haven't even read it yet. But now that we have the details, the European Union don't really like it because it's now shifting the power from the EU to uh, the UK. It's giving control to Northern Ireland to decide uh, what they want to do. Uh, for example, if we don't have a trade deal, uh, every four years, Northern Ireland will have to review uh, the kind of customs arrangements and the, their access to the single markets, uh, and which is going to be quite interesting because they could basically just leave and have no deal by default. And the EU said that it's a trap. And by the way, it could be a trap, but it's in our favour, so I don't care. But because of this, there's now a split within the European Union. Uh, there's one half that's saying, actually, this is logical, let's just get it over with and let them leave. And then there's the other, other half who are saying that this is a trap and we would rather if the UK just remained a member of the European Union. Now, some people like Guy Verhofstadt are also talking about things like uh, being ready to bypass Boris Johnson to grant a Brexit extension. The European Union could grant another Brexit delay even if the letter making a request for an extension beyond uh, the 31st of October, the deadline is not signed by the Prime Minister. European leaders are on a standby to hold an emergency Brexit summit in the last week of the month if Boris Johnson fails to get a new withdrawal agreement past the House of Commons in the next two weeks. Uh, this is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, good luck with that. Let's see what the people of this country would do if you even consider that option. On the other hand, some proper Brexiteers like Kate Hoey are still optimistic about the current situation. You know, I think Boris is, you know, I have to say the Prime Minister is, in my view, doing, if only we had been doing this from day one after the referendum, we wouldn't be in the position we are in now. But hopefully this is the beginning of the, of, of, of the end of, of the situation, because I do think everyone who says we have to be out by October the 31st is right. Business needs that certainty. And all the businesses who I speak to say to me, look, just, just get out. Tell us what you're, you want to happen and we will mm. work it out. We will work it well, out. Exactly. And, and are you confident, Kate, that I know you've got to rush off, but are you confident that the things that are currently being looked at and the things that you're talking about are not in breach in any way of the Good Friday Agreement? Oh, no, ab absolutely not in breach. And of course, that's the other sort of almost red herring. That's all now, for once since 2016, the United Kingdom and Brexiteers are finally united. Uh, these were the scenes from the Tory conference that I attended earlier this week. Boris! 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 Now, as I said, as a WTO Brexiteer, at this point, I'm neither defending nor rejecting uh, this uh, proposal uh, because we don't even know if the EU is going to accept it. Uh, but I'm just giving out the facts at the moment uh, because there's a lot of misinformation going out there because of Remainers like Jeremy Corbyn saying this is basically a Theresa May's deal. Uh, obviously, it's not. Uh, so, uh, but the, the biggest reason 
that I am optimistic and as I've said that we are leaving uh, the, at the end of October. So prepare your Brexit costumes because uh, Halloween is coming up. The reason is that this has been a very, very smart move by the Boris Johnson government because the European Union thought they're going to be dealing with a group of uh, people in a mess, in a, in a kind of uh, in a rush, not knowing what to do because they just came into governments. But at this point, uh, Boris could basically just say, well, at least we gave uh, our option. We tried. This is our proposal. And if the EU rejects it, that basically makes uh, any extension that the EU 27 countries have to approve redundant. Because the whole point of extension when the 27 countries get together is uh, to continue the talks to come up with some sort of agreement. Now, if the EU rejects it, then obviously there's absolutely no point in having any extension anyway. So Boris Johnson governments are now coming across as a sensible ones that had tried to make this work. But, which, but in reality, uh, it will force the EU to give us a no deal Brexit. But we're not giving up just yet because we still have a few weeks to go to sort out our Brexit costumes for Halloween, which you can do by going on our merchandise site where we still have the Never Surrender t-shirts and People vs Parliament coffee mugs and uh, phone cases. A lot of you have been asking for hats. I'm happy to now announce that we have also now added hats to the list of merchandise. So make sure you check out the link in the description. And uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification button next to it. Otherwise, you won't be notified when I release a new video. Videos come out every day at 5.45 p.m. just before the Nigel Fraud show on LBC. And if you want to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, you can find them down here. As always, I'm Maya Tusi, and this is the fastest growing center-right Brexit channel in the country.